Welcome to Dr. Charles Speaks, a podcast for now. You've joined us for a special series of transformational talks, selected exclusively from Dr. Charles' corporate success calls. The 15-minute calls are designed to encourage leaders, activate your thought life, and prepare you for the challenges ahead. Dr. Charles joins every call with a blend of his personal experiences, his expertise as a John Maxwell certified mentor and coach, and of course, his more than 30 years of exceptional experience in both corporate America and ministry. Get motivated with Dr. Charles Speaks, a transformational talk from the red line on today's podcast, inspiring excellence and generating results. Good day, my friends. This is Dr. Charles. We're going to all together make it a great day. That's because we are positive people, and positive people are contagious. And so today, I want to continue what we always do, and that is to get our week off on a positive note and to inspire you and continue to challenge you. You never stop. We're never going to stop challenging ourselves and each other along this personal leadership growth journey. And today, I want to talk to you about uh, the subject area of a person of influence empowers people. Uh, I've been reading this book by John Maxwell, and um, this has been a, uh, a title that is so important in leadership because when we come to realize and truly understand that in of ourselves, Uh, We can only do so much, but when we empower people and others, uh, we're able to effectively use and collectively uh, all bring together the different diverse talents and strengths and be able to share with one another. And when we uh, empower others, we're going to have benefits because we're going to benefit not only the department, we're going to benefit the team, uh, the company, and we can certainly learn and grow from each other. Because, my friends, no matter how engaging you may be, your personality may be, you will not advance far in business if you cannot and choose not to work through others. It is so important that we work through others, developing talent, developing future leaders. No one has it all to themselves, but people think they do. Uh, We used to call them know-it-alls. They know everything, and you can't tell them anything. But in today's world that we live in, it's so much great talent out there uh, that we need to take full advantage of and tap into the resources of the diverse talent that we have and become better and better as we go and be receptive to each other and be able to pull things together and imagine things together and see the vision together and get to the top of the mountaintop together. Uh, Nordstrom, he says this. He says, believe in your people and encourage them to achieve excellence, and then release them to do it. And that's the key, is that we're not just going to take leaders, make them, and put them up in the closet somewhere and lock them up and not let them get out of the four walls and just keep them to ourselves. We're not going to be selfish. We're going to develop leaders. We're going to turn them loose and release them so that they can soar and be the best that they can be. William Walcott, he put it this way when we're talking about the ability to empower others. He says this, he says, the act of empowering others changes lives and it is a win-win situation for not only you, the leader, and the people you empower. And that is so true, and that's the imprint that I want to leave on this call today is that the act of empowering others and to change lives, it is a win-win situation because you and the people that you empower are going to benefit. As I've said, no matter how engaging you may be, you're not going to advance far in business if you cannot work through others because when you empower people— You're not influencing just them. Get this. You're not influencing just them. You're influencing all of the people that they influence. It multiplies. You're also enabled to others, you're enabling others, that is, to reach the highest levels 
in their personal and professional development. It's so key. So there is benefit for all that are involved. And when you are able to share and let go some of the workload and some of the things that you're working on and give them up to other people and empower them to represent you as ambassadors, uh, an extension of you, and they're able to multiply themselves and reach further, it's going to make a difference. There are two qualifications when it comes to empowering people. When it comes to empowering people, number one, you have to be in a position, obviously, of power, of authority over the people that you're leading. That is number one. You, you, you just can't uh, empower yourself, to, but only but so far you can go with that. But when you're talking about an organization, when you're talking about a team, even if you're talking about a family, uh, the, the number one uh, qualification is to be in position of power. And those could be parents. It could be your manager. It could be even your pastor. But these people uh, are people who are empowered in position. Number two, you must have a relationship with the people that you are empowering because if you don't have a relationship, you can talk all you want and tell them what to do and no one's listening to you. Uh, They're just minding their own business and going on. But when you have established the positions of, of authority and you have a relationship with the people, then you are in position to empower folks and help them, and they in turn will help you, and together you will reach where you're going. Ralph Waldo Emerson, he wrote this. He said this. He said, every man or woman is entitled to be valued by his or her best moments. Because when you value people and your relationships with them, this is what you're doing. You're laying the foundation for empowering others. Did you get that? When you value people and your relationship, it starts there because the people will have to yield. They don't have to, but because of your position alone, it will not get them to follow along with you. But you will be able to develop, if you take the time, your organization, to build the solid relationships with the people then in that scenario, it lays the foundation for empowering people. So I said, you know, the qualification is one, you got to be in a position and place of authority. And two, you got to have a relationship with people that you're empowering. And then number three, it goes hand in hand with the relationship, and that is respect. Because relationships, they cause people to want to be with you. But get this, respect is essential to the empowerment process. Someone said this. They said, if you wish others to respect you, you must show respect for them. And that is so true. You know that it's true as you have uh, experience for yourself. It starts with that relationship, but then it transfers into the area of respect because you want to be treated with respect and, and likewise the other person. And so when you believe in people, when you care about people and when you trust them, the people, they know it and they respond. And this kind of respect that you show them, what it does, it inspires them to want to follow where you lead. And this is the secret sauce of successful leadership that is building trust and relationship And the end result, you will have the respect of people, and they will listen to you, and they will follow. And that is so important as you begin to uh, build your team and empower your people that are on your team, you are going to give them that same respect that you expect. And when they represent you in carrying out the vision that you have then you will see no difference in what you're saying and what you're modeling because they will have learned from you through the elements of relationship and trust and respect. Now, let me go on and talk about this because 
there's some things that we need as leaders. And the last quality that I wanted to speak on is that a leader needs to become a person of empowerment as it relates to commitment, because we can't just stop with relationship and respect. We must have commitment. And people must believe that a task is worthwhile if they're going to be committed to it. So how do we empower people? Because that's the question. We've been talking about a person of leadership and influence and how they go about doing that. Just having a position alone doesn't get it done. But we've said there must be a solid relationship with the people that you're empowering and that that relationship will transfer even into the area of respect. And then we finish that with commitment because committed people make a difference versus people who are just serving lip service and going through the motion. When you are fully committed, you're in it all the way. And so the second part of this message today is how do we empower people? Well, first of all, we evaluate them just like anything else you want to see by people's actions and by what they say. Uh, We evaluate them to even if it's um, uh, to get an understanding of what they bring to the table, so to speak. The second thing that you want to look at in terms of empowering people is that you, yourself, including me, we want to model for them. What do you mean model for them? People do, get this, people do what people see. We talk about in my business coaching, uh, the coaching model. It's not new, maybe new to some, but it's a coaching model that goes like this. Uh, Show, do, and review. You would tell them how to do things, and then the second step, you would show them how to do it, and then the third step, they would do it themselves, and then the fourth step would be a review of what went well, what's working, and what to continue to practice. And as you continue to practice, you'll see that this model becomes that much more effective when someone is one, uh, more than just telling, but actually modeling and doing, and then giving the person that they're going to empower the ability to do it themselves, and then to talk about it and give feedback as to how they can do it even better. And so the last one is to empowering people, that is to give them permission that is to succeed. You have to help others believe that they can succeed and then you show them what you want them to succeed because once people recognize and understand that you genuinely want to see them succeed and are committed to helping them, they will begin to believe and they can accomplish what you give them to do. So my time has run out, my friends. So what have we talked about today? We've talked about the person of influence. What do they do? They empower people. And they begin that with solid relationships because position alone won't get it. But relationship and respect and commitment will get it done. And then in looking to empower people, you're evaluating them, giving them a little bit at a time, giving them opportunity to grow. And then secondly, you're modeling for them. And then thirdly, you're giving them permission to succeed. I want to thank you for joining me today. This has been The Red Line. You've been with Dr. Charles. Now let's go back to work. Thank you for listening to Dr. Charles Speaks. Visit drcharlesred.com for booking info for your ministry, business, or leadership team. Get info about The Red Line, a 15-minute corporate success call each Monday morning with Dr. Charles. Follow Dr. Charles on all social media at Dr. Charles Red. Subscribe to the podcast here for every episode of Dr. Charles Speaks. Thanks for joining us. Like Dr. Charles always says, no matter what, never, never, never give up. Until next time.